Now I would like to uh, introduce Prof, uh, Professor Dr. Omar uh, Kasuli, who uh, made it his uh, pur purpose of his life to realize uh, integration of knowledge in his own career and to promote it in Muslim societies uh, all over the world. Dr. Omar Kasuli is originally from Uganda. He obtained a certificate in Arabic and Islamic studies from Bilal Institute in his home country. And after completing undergraduate studies in Uganda, he moved abroad and went on to obtain a doctorate in epidemiology uh, from Harvard University, USA. Uh, later on, after working in the USA, he moved to the uh, International Islamic University in Malaysia, uh, where he held various positions from 1995 to 2005. And after IIUN, he taught at the University of Brunei until his new position in Saudi Arabia, uh, King Fahad Medical Sister City in Riyadh in 2009, where he is serving until now. And besides his brilliant teaching and research career, he is also uh, an activist addressing the crisis of duality of education in Muslim majority countries. And so the ideas and the practice of the integration of the revealed and human acquired uh, knowledge are close to his heart. And let us hear about his understanding an experience of what it means to unite and reconcile the revealed and secular knowledge. Uh, so, Prof. Omar, please, uh, the mic is yours now. So, we'll be. Uh, Can I share? To hear your lecture. Yes, yes, please. Bismillah, wa ala barakatillah, wa salat wa salam ala rasulillah. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, this morning uh, discussing this. Uh, important topic of uh, integration of knowledge. Uh, the main thrust of my presentation is that integration of knowledge is based on the basic paradigm in Islam, the paradigm of Tawheed, because Tawheed is about uh, integration. Uh, Tawheed al-Rububiyya means that there is only one creator. And that concept is the center of Islam as a religion and as a civilization. So uh, once we say there is one creator, it means that the universe is integrated. So everything about Islam is about integration and comprehensiveness, Shumuliyat al-Islam. Now, we all innately know that there is one creator because uh, the concept that the universe created itself, auto-creation, is not logical. You know, the logic says there must be a creator for all of this. There is the concept also that there are several creators for the universe is not logical because you look at your body, your heart, your lungs, everything is so well coordinated and your body is so well coordinated with the ecosystem. If there were two or three creators, each one would have done things in a different way and wouldn't have the harmonious uh, universe in which we live. As the Quran says, If there were two creators, uh, the world would have uh, uh, been uh, messed, up, messed up. Also, the evidence of Tawheed al-Rububiyya, that there is one creator, is everywhere in uh, our bodies uh, uh, and also uh, in the cosmos, as we learn in uh, Surah Al-Anbiya. So my thesis is, when we talk about integration of knowledge, really we're extending the concept of uh, Tawheed al-Rububiyya uh, to this field uh, of knowledge. Now, uh, there is one creator who created matter, energy, and also the physical and social laws. Phenomena of matter and energy are related by physical and social laws that were also created. And these laws are called as sunan al ilahiya because everything was created in a deliberate way. Now, so... Allah has got laws in the human body, in the cosmos, and in the society. So what we have, things were created, matter and energy, 
but also the interactions between them are governed by these laws of Sunan. Actually, the purpose of science and research is to understand the phenomena of energy and matter, but also understand the interactions between them. These interactions are the laws of causality. These are the physical and social laws. So when we understand the, the laws that govern interactions among things, then all we do in technology and social engineering is either to enhance those relations for good or change them to prevent uh, the bad. Now, the physical laws that determine the interaction of different things are actually fixed. Uh, uh, we'll be seeing later how the Quran talks about uh, uh, all of these things indicate that there is a scheme in creation that is integrated, that puts things together. And most of the laws actually are not under human control. Like when you swallow your food, you have no control over it. It moves through the esophagus, the stomach, the digestion. You have no control. But there are physical laws that govern what happens to the food. The law of gravity is a universal law. It explains the relations among bodies. It's fixed. The laws of motion, as described by Newton, are fixed. Uh, Einstein's uh, universal theory. So all of these phenomena point that there is one creator who created everything and because it is one creator, this Tawheed al rububiyyah everything must fit together. Everything must be integrated. That is how we come to the concept of integration of knowledge. Uh, for example, the cosmic bodies, the sun, the moon, uh, their movements uh, are, are fixed. Their movements are very exact. There is a creator behind that. There is integration. So these cosmic bodies also move in a fixed integrated way. So integration is the prima facie uh, status uh, of Allah's uh, creation. Now, besides the physical laws, there are also social laws. Uh, there are laws that govern the way the society works. Uh, and Quran talks about this sunan. So, these are social laws uh, that also help understand the integration among social uh, phenomena. Also, we know that phenomena change, things change, we grow older, uh, things get smaller, plants grow, things get destroyed. Even the changes follow certain laws. Uh, the Quran tells us that in society, uh, in Allah, Allah doesn't change his society until it changes itself. And uh, communities change. And there is also the law of action and reaction which prevents corruption. Uh, so uh, even changes, social changes are governed by these laws. So these laws really emanating from Tawheed al rububiyyah are the basis for integration. So I want to say that Tawheed makes the integration of knowledge an imperative. When you start from Tawheed, it's very clear that if knowledge is understanding phenomena, uh, knowledge must be integrated because Tawheed itself 
integrates all phenomena and all laws uh, in the universe. So all disciplines of knowledge must integrate because they study phenomena created by the same creator who created those physical laws governing the interactions among the phenomena. Now, a long time ago, ancient scholars were encyclopedic, really they were integrated. They used to know all disciplines. Galileo, for example, was an astronomer, a physicist, an engineer, a polymath. Huh? Uh, when you come to uh, Muslim uh, scholars like um, uh, Ibn Rushd, he was a physician, an astronomer, and a philosopher. A long time ago, when knowledge wasn't very much in volume, the scholars actually were integrated because they had all disciplines. But later on, specialization became necessary because the volume of knowledge in each discipline became enormous. And with that, the integration among disciplines was lost because of too narrow specialization. Now in medicine, people will uh, integrate in dealing with uh, the brain, but someone may integrate, may decide to specialize in part of the brain. Another one may subspecialize in that part of the brain. So with more specialization, integration got lost in many disciplines. So many problems arose out of this lack of integration. That is why you see today, we make a lot of progress in uh, industry, in manufacturing chemicals, manufacturing goods. But before we know it, we have messed up the environment. It's because the one who is manufacturing the factory does not have the concept of integrating what goes on in the factory with, with what goes on in the environment. You have got severe pollution. So the disintegration of knowledge uh, uh, has caused many problems. And I think when we talk about integration of knowledge, uh, we are talking about something that is needed to bring back balance uh, in our society. Now, the word integration has got several uh, interpretations. Uh, in calculus, you remember in mathematics, was putting together slices and adding them, integrate. But in common language, the word integration uh, somehow uh, implies, you have got synonyms that imply that there was disintegration ab initio to start with, because the word combination, amalgamation, incorporation, all of these mean integration. They assume that things were uh, into disintegrated, but actually things should be integrated from uh, the beginning. So what is integration? Integration is using all sources of knowledge in solving a specific problem. And that is what we call sometimes multidisciplinary approach. You use several disciplines uh, to solve a problem. That's an integrated uh, approach. Now we want to go further and talk about another aspect of integration, uh, which I want to say, uh, I want to call it uh, the Islamic integration. And I will be talking about that uh, later. That is when we integrate uh, empirical and rational knowledge with the revealed uh, knowledge. So the Islamic position starting from Tawheed is that integration is the original state. At the beginning, everything was integrated in knowledge. Disintegration is necessary, but temporary. You need to break up things in order to understand the parts, but you shouldn't forget to go back to the uh, integration. Maybe I will digress here and say something that I always discuss with people. My feeling is that the Islamic worldview is integrative or synthet synthetic. We understand by putting things together. We understand by looking at the whole. Whereas the predominant world, European worldview, again, according to my understanding, is that it's analytic. You see, you understand by breaking things up and understanding the component parts. 
This is a big difference in worldview and explains a lot of cultural differences. Whereas the European worldview understands by being analytic and disintegrating and understanding the component parts, you will you will find that the European worldview cares a lot about the details. The Islamic worldview uh, is more integrative. It looks at the overall picture. I'll give you an example we have in our hospitals where we have people from several nationalities. Uh, you may have a European nurse who gets very angry because the patient was late. You know, our patients come late. You tell them nine o'clock, they come at 10 o'clock. Also our doctors come late. So the patient comes at 10 and the doctor comes at 10. They were supposed to come at nine. The nurse will be angry at both of them. The doctor will say, why are you angry? Nobody waited for the other. Both of us came at 10 o'clock. She says, no, it was scheduled at nine o'clock. You didn't do it right because she looks at the detail. This other person says, as long as nobody waited for, for the other, the overall picture is okay. So this is a very big difference uh, in culture that we, we need to explore further as we talk about integration. Now, in terms of integrating knowledge, there are several types of integration. You can talk about integration of the scholar. Uh, I talked before about encyclopedic scholars. Huh? Uh, for example, Ibn Rushd was a polymath, a philosopher, a theologian, a physician, an astronomer, and a jurist. That is, the scholar himself is integrated. Today, al alim al mawsu'i the encyclopedic scholar, is very difficult to find because knowledge is very detailed. No one person can master even one discipline. What about mastering two or three? The second type of integration is integration of disciplines. And actually, this is becoming very popular. You have somebody studying or dealing with more than one discipline. When we talk about geopolitics, we have geography and politics. When we talk about indust industrial psychology, we are talking about industry and psychology. So this multidisciplinary approach to solving problems is becoming very popular and is very welcome. It's a practical manifestation of integration of uh, disciplines of knowledge. Now, integration of the sources of knowledge is what we are talking about, that we need to use more than one source of knowledge in order to understand a problem. So all what I have said about integration applies to everybody, but there is an additional dimension which I learned from, from Professor Biraima, Muhammad Al-Hassan Biraima, which is the Islamic integration of knowledge. See, everybody integrates uh, various sources of uh, knowledge, but the Islamic one has got this additional element of integrating transmitted knowledge, ilm naqli, which is Quran and Sunnah, with rational and empir empirical knowledge, which is ilm aqli. So this is the Islamic integration of knowledge, uh, which I think is the uh, major uh, point of concern in IKI, and which is the major work of uh, TRIPIT and IUM and many other institutions. IIOK, Islamic Integration of Knowledge, arose as a reaction to the secularization of the education system, because the education system made empirical knowledge the only source of knowledge and ignored Nord, knowledge transmitted from revelation. So IIOK is an attempt to redress that, to say that knowledge can come from both ilm naqli and ilm uh, aqli. Uh, we'll soon be finishing. So IIOK, Islamic in Integration of Knowledge, is actually the integration of revelation into epistemology because secularization had removed wahi from uh, epistemology as a source of knowledge. 
You all know that ilm naqli is revealed and transmitted knowledge from Quran and Sunnah. And ilm aqli is rational knowledge based on the human intellect, human observation, and human uh, experimentation. Now, uh, there is no contradiction. There's no essential contradiction between ilm naqli, transmitted knowledge, and ilm aqli, and empirical knowledge. There's no contradiction. And uh, uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, wrote a book in six volumes uh, uh, about Dar'u uh, al-Ta'arub bain al-Naql wal aql So there is no contradiction. Again, we go back to Tawheed because both sources of knowledge are from the same source, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot contradict. Any apparent contradictions are either because the empirical observation is incorrect, your scientific observation is incorrect, or it may be due to the human intellectual deficiency that the human does not understand ilm naqli properly, and he thinks that there is a contradiction. So the two sources of knowledge are complementary and are not uh, contradictory. However, when we are faced with a, spe a specific problem, uh, we use the two sources in a different way. For example, ilm naqli is used exclusively in matters of ethics and morality. You cannot go to a lab and do an experiment on whether uh, lying is good or not. No, that is morality. It comes from ilm naqli. Ilm aqli, which is the empirical one, uh, requires uh, guidance from ilm naqli. So if we do science and technology without uh, fundamental concepts from ilm naqli, we do not do it well, we go wrong. And these fundamental concepts are objectivity al istiqama. That adds you do your experiments, your objective. Uh, uh, there is the ethics that you do science and technology following uh, an ethical system. And purposiveness, ghaiya, as you do science and technology, you need to have an overall aim that you are aiming at. I have a feeling today that many of the things that we produce and we do, we just make them. And then we discover that we created a nuclear bomb, we nucleated, we created nuclear pollution. Because to start with, the overall purpose is not clear. So these three concepts are supplied by uh, Il uh, Nakli. Now, what we need to do is to go back to our education system and try to redress the crisis of having only empirical knowledge without the revealed knowledge. We want to develop disciplines that combine uh, the two sources of knowledge. And in a practical way, we really want to write teaching materials. And I'll be showing you uh, what we are doing in this area. But before we do rewrite teaching materials to combine the two sources of knowledge, we need to have a grasp of the methodological sciences in Islam, usul al-fiqh, ilm al-tafsir, and ilm al-hadith, because these are methodological tools that really enable us to analyze things very well. And then we need to review books about integration of knowledge. A lot has already been written and published. And after reviewing that, we can review uh, the teaching material that exists, and we can write course outlines that have got the Islamic epistemological dimension, and then we write books. Uh, in Triple IT now, we do give grants for people who write teaching materials that present integrated knowledge, and you're all welcome to submit. As I end, I want to show you uh, examples of what we do. Uh, these are seven books that we published last month in Malaysia. Uh, similar books are being published in other places. In Bangladesh, they have many books. Uh, Uganda, Tanzania, 
Nigeria. So uh, the, there is one Arab country where we have 25 books, and there's another Arab-speaking country that will be starting the idea. The idea is, if we want to talk about integration of knowledge, we have to be serious. We have to be practical. It's not something theoretical. We need to actually teach integrated disciplines. How do we teach integrated disciplines? We produce integrated teaching materials. This is the beginning. And this is the dream of al marhum Ismail al-Faruqi, who talked about uh, Al-Kitab al-Jami'i, that we need to produce the book. Alhamdulillah, we are now fulfilling that dream. So I'm ending by showing you some of these books. Uh, just last month were published. Uh, this is about accounting, and he combines the conventional knowledge about accounting with Islamic concepts. This is a book by Dr. Jamal Badi on the spirit of creativity. Again, combining uh, the two sources of knowledge in one book. And these books actually taught in Malaysia in the university. Uh, this is a book on uh, research. Again, combining the two sources of knowledge, Ilm Naqli and Ilm Aqli. And this about marketing from an Islamic perspective. Again, integration. Uh, this is a book on um, gender problems. Again, uh, combining the two uh, sources of knowledge. And this is a book on social linguistics written in, in Arabic. Uh, and this is a book on uh, Arabic literature. So uh, the issue of integration of knowledge is something live. People are working on it. People are producing books and people are teaching an integrated uh, curriculum. And as I said and motivated it, uh, this integration arises directly from Tawhid al-Rububiyya, as I explained. So thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.